The following is a free preview from my online course all about manual metering for film photography. But it's only one of over 45 videos on the course. If you like what you see here, please consider taking a look at the course to see if it might be a good fit for you. But either way, enjoy the video. In this section of the course, I'm going to go over some simple tips and bits of advice to keep in mind as you're doing the manual metering process. And we're going to start in this video with a real simple question. Are you better off underexposing or overexposing your film? Now before I can give you the answer, i got to explain a little bit about film density. So let's look at a negative on the light table here. I have a piece of color print film here, Kodak Portra 160, but this would be the same on black and white film. And as we look at the negative, you'll see there are parts of the negative that are dense and parts that are thin. So for instance, if I put my hand behind the negative, you'll see like this part of the building here is much denser than the border. Now you can see my fingers through the border much more easily than you can see them through that uh, sunlit side of the building. So basically what's happening here is, uh, you know, film is a pretty simple concept. You have a piece of plastic or polyester, which has a gelatin coating on it with a bunch of silver halide crystals in it. And those silver halide crystals react to light. When light hits those silver halide crystals, there's a chemical reaction that works in such a way that when you go to develop the film, all of the silver halide that received light stays on the film. And all the silver halide that didn't receive any light, like the shadows, gets washed off the film. And so the result is, all the parts of your film that didn't receive light just look like clear film. There's no silver halide left. But all the parts that received a real high intensity of light become very dense. So like on my image here, the sunlit side of the building is the densest part of this negative because that's the brightest part of the image. And then the real deep dark shadows on the windows inside the building received almost no light on the film. And so that becomes basically completely clear film. So you have thin parts where the shadows are and dense parts where the highlights are. And pretty much every negative you shoot, there's gonna be dense parts and thin parts. But a negative overall can lean thin or dense. So for instance, these two images here, this negative on the left is much thinner than the one on the right. You can tell because much more light is passing through this thin negative from my light table. You can see through it much more easily. So the one on the left is a much thinner negative than the one on the right. Now when you have a thin negative like this, that means that the image is really dark because it didn't receive much light. Most of the silver halide got washed away in the developing process because it never saw light and got that chemical reaction. So this image on the left is quite a bit darker than the one on the right. Now to make that easier to see, I'm going to invert the colors on my video here. And you can see now, this image on the left is a much darker exposure than the one on the right. So thin negatives equal dark exposures, dense negatives equal bright exposures. That's on print film, negatives. When you go to color reversal film, like Fuji Velvia, Provia, or Kodak Ektachrome for instance, it's the exact reverse. Hmm, wonder where they got the name reversal film. So it's the reverse from a negative. The highlights are actually the thin portions of the negative. So take a look at the sunlit side of the building. You can see my fingers through there pretty easily. But then when we go to the border of the image, where no light was uh, touching the film, it's very dense, it's basically black. You can't even see my finger through it. So the highlights become very thin, and the shadows, like the windows inside the building, become very dense. So on color reversal film, a dense negative would be a dark exposure, and a thin negative would be a bright exposure. So that brings us back to the question, are you better off underexposing or overexposing your film? Well, this all boils down to film density. And the simple answer is, you're better off with film that's too dense than with film that's too thin. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense why that would be. Let's say you're taking a negative into the darkroom to print it with an enlarger. Or maybe you're taking it to a scanner to turn it into a digital positive. Either way, if your film is really thin, there's not much silver halide on it, the light from the enlarger and the light from the scanner is going to pass through it too easily. And you can't dial it back enough to maintain all the detail. But if your film is much denser, when the light passes through the negative from your enlarger or your scanner, if it's not getting through well enough because it's too dense, 
Easy solution. Just let the light go through longer. So in your enlarger, you just do a longer exposure. You can fix a dense negative in the printing or scanning process much more easily than you can fix a thin negative. Because on an enlarger or a scanner, you can only dial back the light so much. So you can't do too much with a thin negative. But if the negative is dense, you can always pump the light up higher or let it expose longer when you're getting your print made. So that's why it's better to have a dense piece of film than a thin piece of film. So when we're talking about print film, which I'm going to call negative film, no one calls it that, it's properly called print film, you're better to overexpose the image because that will result in a denser negative. Whereas on reversal film, it's better if you underexpose than overexpose because again, that will result in a denser piece of film. So print film, you're better off overexposing. Reversal film, you're better off underexposing. But you know what's better than both of those options? It's best to get a correct exposure, baby. Get it correct. You don't have to lean bright or dark if you get a correct exposure. And you know, with the precision method to manual metering that you've learned on this course, you're gonna find that you really don't have to lean bright or dark very often. The precision method is called the precision method for a reason. You can get a correct exposure without having to lean bright or dark. But the reason I'm giving you this information is there will be instances where you feel like you're not 100% sure of your metering and you kind of have this Sophie's choice, this difficult decision of should I lean towards my darker metering or my brighter metering? I don't know if I should lean brighter or darker. Well, if it's print film, lean for the brighter exposure. If it's Reversal film, lean for the darker exposure. So it's just to help you err in the proper direction in those instances where you do have to make uh, an imperfect exposure. Now I wanna give you a little disclaimer, uh, a little word of warning with this uh, bit of advice I just gave you. You know, the internet's a funny thing and people are funny, uh, what they do with information. What seems to happen a lot in the photography community is someone who knows what they're talking about, like Ansel Adams, for instance, he'll come out and say something like, you're better off overexposing your negatives than underexposing your negatives. They'll put out a little piece of advice that's correct, it's sound, it checks out. But what seems to happen is a lot of people hear it and then they tweak it just enough to be wrong. And then they go spreading that around like wildfire. I don't know why it works that way, but it seems like if you tweak it just enough to be wrong, everyone gobbles it up. So that happened with this whole better off overexposing than underexposing thing. So someone like Ansel Adams said, when you're shooting negatives, when you're shooting print film, you're better off overexposing than underexposing. But what a lot of people heard was, oh, I should overexpose every picture I take. So they go around saying things like, oh, I, uh, Fuji Pro 400H, I really shoot it at like ISO 100. Because it, it, re it really does best when it's overexposed by two to three stops. Or like, I, every picture I take, I, I meter for the shadows and then I, I add two stops. That's not what the advice said. The advice said, if you had to choose between overexposure and underexposure, you're better off with an overexposed negative than an underexposed. But people tweak that into, I should overexpose every image. It's complete nonsense. Don't buy into it if you come across that. You should not be overexposing, quote unquote, every picture you take. That's complete nonsense. And having gone through this course, I'm sure you know that by now. When shooting negatives, if you had to choose between overexposure and underexposure, you're better off overexposing. When doing reversal film, you're better off underexposing if you had to choose between the two. But again, what's really best is a correct exposure. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in class.